Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press, and I have with me today Randy Lundin. He is the Senior Product Manager for Mission Critical Service. How are you doing, Randy? Very good. So today what we're here to talk about is our 3950XX system. It's an 8-socket system, 8U in size, with a very large memory footprint that you'll see later. It's an award-winning design, and it's won numerous number one benchmarks. And what sort of applications is this system so, uh, meant for? Well, since it's our most powerful server with our largest memory footprint, it's, it's ideally suited for large virtualization, mission-critical databases, in-memory databases, and business analytics. Oh, very good. All right. So let's um, go some inquiry and we'll go through some of the components in the system, shall we? Sounds good. Let's right. go. Okay, so here we have the X3950X6. Now, if you're familiar with the four-socket X3850X6, you probably recognize a lot of the components. In fact, the two systems share a lot of the same things, the same uh, uh, compute books and storage books, as well as IR right, components at the back. So let's look at the, <laughs> the components at the front, Randy. Yes. Um, so the, the most visible thing at the front are these circular units. These are hot swap fans, and they are in front of the compute books. The compute right. books are where the um, memory and the processors are installed. Mm -hmm. um, I use the term compute book because we, we talk about this design in terms of books, like books on a bookshelf. The idea is that all of these components are accessible like a book on a bookshelf where you remove the component from the front or from the back of the server. Unlike other rack servers, we don't have a cover to remove from the top. It's all very accessible. Right. Um, once you've installed it in the rack, you don't need to remove the whole unit to gain access to most of the components. Right, so you rack it once and all the components are accessible for routine maintenance or for fixing it uh, that slides out the front or the back of the server that you'll see. Right, yep, so let's have a look at the uh, uh, compute books first, shall we? Uh, to gain access to those, you remove one of the hot swap fans uh, just by pulling it out like that. Um, th these are hot swap fans. The fans are actually redundant, and you can tell from the orange uh, label there that, that these are hot swap components. And then once you've removed the fan, then you r this lever here, slide that to the side, and that releases this handle, which allows you to give you access to the compute book completely. Uh, the, the compute book is a blue handle, so it's not a hot swap component, so you power off the system before you remove the compute book. All right, so um, the compute book is an interesting design in that there are components on both sides. Okay. Um, the compute book contains memory and processors, and we have memory dims on both sides of the compute book. So let's open this up. Okay, so what we have here um, is the, um, the processor. This is uh, yep. the Intel Xeon uh, E7 V4 processor. Correct. Um, available, uh, support on the system are the E7 4800 and E7-8800 V4 processors. Right. But this being an 8-socket system, we would only use the E7-8800 right, yes. V4 Good processors. Point. Yes, yep. Um, the system, uh, so each, each of these compute books um, has 12 DIMMs on this side and 12 DIMMs on the other side right. for a total of 24 DIMMs uh, per compute book. Right, and with 8 compute books, that gives you 192 DIMMs, which if you put our largest uh, memory sizes mm -hmm. in there, uh, it gives you 12 terabytes of data. That's so using the 64 gig um, exactly. LRDMs, right? So yeah. to support those large memory applications in memory databases. So significant amount of memory. S significant um, amount. For, for a single single system. Right. Yeah. Um, so the, the memory DIMMs um, all um, have a light path diagnostic capability, uh, which means that there are little LEDs uh, next to each of the DIMMs. Um, on the front of the compute book, there is a small button here. So in the event of a DIMM failure, um, the, the uh, um, light path diagnostic system will activate. And when you remove the compute book with the failed components, you'll be able to press this button to power a, uh, the LEDs here that will indicate which of the DIMM, which DIMM has failed. So it's a very easy way to uh, figure out which DIMM has failed, remove it, replace it, right. and get you And you'll be able to again. see that actually without taking off the cover due to the clear glass window. Yeah. Yeah, the and each dim is identified, and you will be able to see the light path diagnostic light through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yep. so show the other side. So as let's well. yeah, let's put this back on and flip it over and show you um, what's on the other side as well. Turn that over. So same on the other side of the compute book, uh, of course, without the the, the process that's on right. the first side. Another twelve dims so, on this side. Right. So the the process is of re of in reinstalling is is. Uh, is the same as the right wing, as uh, 
was we removed it in the first place. Very easy design, um, like so. Uh, and then you need to release that, slide that back in, and then, and then the put, put the fan back in. So the hot the fans are hot swapped. So in the event of a fan failure, it is very easy process to replace any of these uh, these fans on the front of the system. Now, as well on the front, uh, we have the storage book. Again, the book design. Mm -hmm. So the, this is the one storage book here. The 3950 has two storage books. Um, each storage book has um, access uh, has USB ports in front, two USB uh, 3.0s and a single USB 2 uh, VGA ports. And there is also a, an LCD panel. Now, what's that useful for, Randy? That's to provide information about the system. Um, it also is tied in with the light path diagnostics to identify mm -hmm. any of the component failures or any of the components that are in the process of potentially failing as well, so you can replace them before they actually fail. Now, this, I mean, if you look at this visually, it looks like it is two <coughs> servers, one on top of the other. Right. Um, the 3850 is basically half of right. the 3950. Right. Now, why is that? Well, that, that's not by, that's not by, uh, we did that on purpose. Um, the reason is it, there's many shared components with the 3850 and the 3950. You can actually ch exchange the uh, compute books from each other. Mm -hmm. But one of the key reasons is the top half and the bottom half, if you, you can partition these systems as to run as two independent four socket systems. That is from a hardware perspective as well as from an operating system. So if you set it up, the system up that way, and this is all via the software and the firmware, the operating systems will actually see them as two independent four socket systems. So we have a lot of people in development uh, that do that because they will need to test a four socket system and then maybe they're running another development test, they need an eight socket system. They can reconfigure it back to an eight socket system without changing any of the hardware. Yeah, yeah very good. Now, um, this system is running the latest E7 <coughs> V4 processors. Um, if, if customers already have the, this, this machine uh, V2 or V3 processors. Right. What's the upgrade path there? Right. So one one of the big advantages of our design here is the the compute books are what holds the the processors and the memory. So you can update a previous generation of this X6 server just by updating the new with the new E7 8800 V4 processor. So you can update a V2 system or a V3 system by by putting in new compute books mm -hmm. and all the other all components, the components. Uh, are you're good to go with. On that, so yeah. it's a very economical way to upgrade your system. Yeah, very good. All right. So Let's, one um, of the things I want oh, to talk yeah, about, yeah. Dave, before we storage move books, on, yes. is um, from the storage book perspective. As you can see, that we have the options for the 1.8 inch drives, but also the two and a half inch drives. Yeah. But what? So on these two and a half, and the 1.8 are the SS are SSDs. But in the two and a half, we have, we have a choice of three different types of storage. There is the two and a half inch NVMe SSD. There's a standard SSD or your traditional spinning drive. And as you can see, they are all physically the same size and they all three can fit into one of the available 2.5 inch slots for a total of 16 slots on the 3950. So let's show them the inside of yeah. the storage book. David. So to remove the, the storage, storage book from the server, I press the button here, it releases the handle, and then pull the handle out like so to gain access to the internals of the storage book. And inside the storage book are the two uh, adapters used to drive the uh, uh, the drives that are attached there, Correct. connected via mid plane, uh, sorry, by back planes. There, the this particular one has two uh, RAID cards installed, but the server also supports HBAs or the PCI extenders for the NVMe drives. Right. And one of the nice things about having these PCI slots up in the front is it doesn't your uh, storage adapters don't take away valuable PCI slots in the back of the server. And you also don't have the large cables that go from the back of the server to the front of the server. So it's a very clean, modular design. Yeah. And just like the, the compute books, uh, they are very easy to, to reinstall um, once you right. service those components. There we go. Let's swing it around and show the back All of right. the server. Yeah. Also, um, a nice thing to point out, David, pop yeah. that handle there. Yes. The, uh, the server includes these integrated, integrated handles. Uh, it's, it's a convenience feature. 
when you do install the server right. at the beginning, right. um, or if you need to move to another rack, for example, the, having the, the integrated handles is, yeah. is a nice touch. Especially come in handy when you pull it out of the box for the first time. Once you yes, wrap this server, you may never actually yep. use the handles again. Yeah. Yep. Nice, nice convenience feature. Yeah. All right. So at the back of the server, uh, where it's where all the, the slots are, uh, to Randy, a total of 24 PCIe slots, right? In Which the includes our mezzanine launch. Right. Slots. So we right. have we have the four um, slots at the front of the server Correct. for all the storage controllers, and then up to um, uh, what's, my, what's my math here? Up to 20 at the at the back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can't can't subtract. <laughs> okay, so uh, so let's look look at each of these. So um, on this side of the um, the server, uh, this is the primary I/O book. Right. This this from this blue handle over to this blue handle. And it here. comes with every single server that you yes. purchase. Yes. And the primary I/O book contains four of the PCIe slots, and you can see in the 3950 there are two primary I/O books. Those right. are standard. And then on this side there are two optional I/O books, and each of those um, is three An slots. Additional three PCI slots right. per optional I/O book. Right. And you can see for the 3950. <coughs> That there are one, two, three, four uh, optional I/O books that, that you can install. Right. Um, underneath those, there are the power supplies. A total of eight power supplies. Um, the regular size is fourteen hundred watt power supplies. The nine hundred watt is also well, available for a smaller well. configuration. Right. Now, these are these are hot swap and uh, N plus N redundant. So uh, as you'd expect for a system that's mission critical. Right. Yeah. And so these these I/O books and the power supplies are shared between the 3850 and the 3950. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So let's um, remove. Let's, so this is the primary yeah. I/O book. Let me actually before we remove it, let me point out the the connectors at the back. So there's a VGA port, uh, a dedicated uh, a service port to the management module, the integrated management module, uh, four USB 2 ports, mm -hmm. uh, standard serial port. Um, then there are the regular PCI slots, one, two, three of those, and then the special ML2 slot. Right. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, two hot swap fans again, just like the ones at the front, easy to remove um, if one of them has a failure, and then reinstall a fresh one. Okay, let's uh, remove that. Let's pull. Blue handles again indicate that this is not a hot swap component, so you need to right. remove power before, before pulling this out. Okay. What's, uh, what's this here, Randy? Well, this is an air baffle, and it's not so much here to cool the primary I.O. book, but what it is is to cool the storage and the hard drives in the front of the server. If, if you can see, this is exactly lined up with the storage in the front of the server. So that's meant to direct the cool air and pull it through the storage and through the hard drives to cool them. Each of the processors of memory have their own fans in the front. Okay, so we can lift that to gain access to the, port, the components on the, on the board here. Um, so this is the, the, the primary I.O. book, and there are four slots here. This, this is the adapter, is the ML2 adapter. Correct. Now, that's the MESLOM2, right? Yeah, ML2. What's, um, what's so special about that? Well, it's a unique adapter that we have at Lenovo, and you know, one of the biggest things is that it, it saves cost for the clients versus a standard, standard PCI slot. Mm -hmm. It also has some additional features. Yep. Okay. So and one, one of those, have yeah, one of the features is the ability to have shared management access. So that one of the ports on that adapter can be, can right. be used to share to access right. the IMM right. uh, management process. And on, this, as on well. the system board, we have this actually system board that actually holds the firmware for the server. So um, as you can see, that's where a lot of the, the brains are for the server here. Mm -hmm. This uh, component just here is <laughs> the uh, the VMware hypervisor key. Correct. Um, for VMware ESXi. Correct. If, if you wish to boot from that. Yeah. So. Okay. So that's the primary I.O. book. Yes. Uh, Let's show them one of the uh, optional I.O. books. Yes. Here. Okay. Okay. So these are um, I.O. books that are available um, if you want to add additional cards beyond the, the four slots that are standard, standard in the server. Um, the, the, the orange handle indicates this is actually a hot swap component. So if the mm -hmm. adapters support hot swap capability, and the and operating, operating system, system does, supports right. hop capability, then you can actually <coughs> perform hot swap activities, uh, meaning that you can replace adapters while the operating system Correct. is still running. Correct. So that's a handy feature if you're looking for to max looking to maximize uh, availability of, the, of your system. Um, and the, this this particular one, this is the the shorter of the two. Right. IO that's our options. standardized one. Um, it has uh, three slots. Uh, there's a, a by 16 and two by eight 
PCIe 3.0 slots. Right. These are half length. Now, if you're looking for support for the full length adapters, such as GPU adapters, mm -hmm. right? Then we have the, the full length IO book. So this, if, if you compare the two, you can see that yeah. they're physically, physically longer. Right. Um, so this supports a full length high power adapter card. It actually supplies you with 225 watts of additional auxiliary power up to 300 watt adapter. So um, if you have a uh, double wide GPU, they're typically you know pretty long cards. That's what this optional I.O. book for. So we call this our full length I.O. book. It will stick out a little bit out the back of the server. Mm. So you have a choice of up to four of these or four of the standard ones or a combination of the two. Yeah, and of course, like, like all system X servers, <coughs> we support a variety of adapters, Correct. Uh, fiber channel, uh, ethernet. We even have the, um, the uh, NVMe adapter um, another yeah. one of the supported right. adapters. Right, so this is an example of what we call an add-in card because it goes directly into the PCI slot in the back of the server, but it is for, um, you know, high-speed storage. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, put the uh, Primary I.O. book back. You can see the process of reinstalling the I.O. books is, is the same as the compute books, very simple process. Yep. Okay. All right, so there you have it. This is the System X 3950X6. It's our eight socket right. uh, flagship server. Hope you found the video useful. Uh, Randy, thanks very much. Okay, thank you. Yep. Now, if you're looking for more information about the server, uh, in the description for the video, we've, we've given you links to other documents that might be useful. We've got a link to the product guide there. Uh, we also have a, uh, a link to the implementation guide, which we've written, which covers both the 3950 mm -hmm and the 3850X6, that's the four socket, um, little brother of this server. Right. Um, and there's links to other documents as well, uh, there as well if you find them useful. Anyway, hope you found the video useful, and we'll see you later.